Radio Lawan COVID-19, wear a mask, save lives. 103.8 Brava Radio, the smoothest sound on radio. Brava listeners, uh, still with me, Venita Daben. And now in the captain segment, we are going to talk about rapid changes and disruptions brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic that have forced businesses to adapt swiftly. Now, consumer goods company Procter & Gamble, or PNG Indonesia, is no exception. The local arm of the United States-based consumer goods firm has prepared several strategies that focus not only on business survival, but also on the health and safety of its employees, the availability of products amid supply chain disruptions, and the pandemic's impact on communities. Okay, to get to know more about the strategies that the PNG Indonesia has implemented to adapt to the quickly shifting world dynamic, we are now joined with President Director of PNG Indonesia, Mr. LV Vanyanathan. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Vinita. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. You're thank you for good. having me on your show. Of course, of course. How do you see Indonesia as a place for PNG to grow its business, especially at this time, at the pandemic? Well, I think the uh, Indonesian market is something that, uh, uh, and the entry that we've had here, yeah. uh, and our presence over the last 32 years is something that we are extremely proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, we have never doubted about the potential of uh, Indonesia mm -hmm. with uh, 270 million people and that to a very young population at that. Yes. Uh, and uh, we have thoroughly uh, enjoyed being here, serving the consumers mm -hmm. uh, here in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And we believe in the potential and we are extremely enthusiastic about the potential despite the pandemic that we've had uh, uh -huh. in the last close to about 15 months now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what are the main challenges that you face today in uh, running the business in Indonesia and how do you plan to overcome it? The I have to say that the government has been largely supportive of mm -hmm. uh, our entry into Indonesia. Uh, they have been largely supportive of all the investments that we have made. Uh, mm -hmm. But when we met uh, Pa Jokowi last year, there was one area where we asked for specific help. Mm -hmm which is uh, the area of counterfeiting uh, of some of our brands. Oh, okay. Right? So uh, what happens is, uh, again, we put consumer at the center of all of this. Uh, the mm -hmm. consumer believes uh, in our brand promise. Yes. Consumer believes they are using uh, a particular brand. And when they find that, uh, when they actually are served with a brand which looks like ours, but yeah. is not ours, yes. uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways, we're cheating them. Right. So mm -hmm. we spoke to Pajoko. We, in fact, we said uh, there are a few things that we need his help mm -hmm. and his uh, mm -hmm. ministry's help, especially in the area of customs, uh, because a lot of this basically comes from outside. Oh, uh, OK. And, you know, if we can actually stop it at the port. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never make knew it that a, it was counterfeit. Yeah, products. make it make it a deterrent uh, mm -hmm. for for these counterfeiters. Then I think it will only help us serve mm -hmm. uh, the Indonesian consumers even a lot better. OK, OK. So. Um, what is your long-term plan in here in Indonesia to develop and expand the PNG brand and business in Indonesia? Uh, like I said, you know, we've been here for the last 32 years. Yes, it's a uh, very long time. Yeah, and we are fully committed to continue to stay invested and st continue to grow mm -hmm. uh, and develop uh, both our business and also seen in, in, in how uh, we can help the society as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, our, uh, we actually, uh, uh, you know, have had investments uh, which have been close to a billion dollars in, um, in terms of putting up a manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. We have uh, more than 1,000 people who are working uh, for us directly. Uh, we have been able to create jobs for more than 15,000 uh, people through our suppliers, through our distributor partners, mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as the company continues to expand, yeah. you know, we see a lot of growth opportunities uh, here in Indonesia. The most recent one which I can talk about is we just acquired the Merck Consumer Health uh, uh, business uh -huh. about a couple of years ago. Okay. And uh, they have very strong presence here. Brands like Neurobion, Sangobion, yeah. yeah. uh, etc. Are, are much loved by the Indonesian consumers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are very fortunate to have them in mm -hmm. our portfolio. Mm -hmm. and to continue to grow uh, with it. Okay, so PNG is here to stay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, uh, 
PNG's customers' demographics are reportedly shifting from boomers and millennials. So, what new marketing strategies and products have been introduced in addressing these markets? For PNG, actually, the the core part of our business basically relies on innovation. Mm-hmm. And the way we design products and proposition first starts with understanding the consumers. Okay. Right? So, who are the consumers? What are their unmet needs? What are the jobs that they are doing which can be done in a better way with our products? Mm-hmm. And so on and so forth. Yeah. Right? Then we design products which are which offer superior performance mm-hmm. and superior value. Mm-hmm. Right? And then once we have that, then we basically market that to these consumers in a way that is most receptive to them, uh, right? So uh-huh. the pr- propositions are designed in such a way that they appeal to these millennials, to the boomers, mm-hmm. to, you know, and, and the demographics keep shifting, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, we make sure that our the core, which is to design products which offer superior quality and mm-hmm. superior value does not change yeah. but the way the how of we bring these propositions to life uh, with the consumers mm-hmm. has evolved over a period of time okay okay yeah even uh, now i have uh, young kids or teenagers they start to have their own brand which they like or maybe it's different from mine but i see that yeah they are the next target right absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, uh, rapid changes and disruptions brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, have forced businesses to adapt swiftly. So, consumer goods company like PNG uh, is no exception. Has um, PNG Indonesia altered its strategies to cope with the pandemic? First, let me start with right at the start of the pandemic. You mm-hmm. know, we were very clearly uh, defining our prior priorities. Mm-hmm. Our priority number one was to ensure the safety and health and well-being of our employees, yeah. right? So uh, so we made sure that, you know, whether our people who are working in the plants or mm-hmm. people who are working with the customers uh, or people who are working in our general office, you know, we quickly changed the way we were working mm-hmm. to ensure that we have no compromise on uh, the safety of uh, any of our uh, employees. So that was that was the first thing that, that we did, uh-huh. right? And I'm, you know, now we are 15 months into it, and I'm really happy to say that, you know, uh, we've been largely successful at that, uh, uh, for, on that priority. The second priority is uh, <clears throat> our brands are uh, much loved by the consumers. And in a pandemic, uh, you know, consumers tend to gravitate towards the brands that they uh, trust the most, right? Yes, true. So it was important for us to make sure that these that we serve the consumers uh, with the availability of our of our brand. So the second priority that we called out was what we call as make pack ship. Uh, uh-huh. So our, our plants were running in, in full capacity mm-hmm. uh, and uh, while ensuring that there was no compromise on the safety of people who are working in the plants, right? Mm-hmm. So again, 15 months into the pandemic, I can say we've been largely successful in making our brands uh, being available to the consumers across all of Indonesia. So okay. that's the second one. The third one was, of course, um, this was the time for us to also in work with the communities in which we live, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So right at the beginning, um, you know, when the pandemic struck, the first need that we thought was to work with the frontliners mm-hmm. and the, their biggest need at that point in time was protective equipment. Uh, uh-huh. So, you know, we were able, to, as a company, we came forward with donations uh, and procuring the protective equipment and we partnered with Ministry of Health and also the Indonesian Doctors Association uh-huh. to provide that at that time and it was most needed. And after that, the second challenge that we found was um, because of you know inability to cope with virtual learning, mm-hmm. um, we had uh, a big risk of almost a million children dropping out of schools. Right. So again, yeah. we partnered with Save the Children to, uh, you know, work in Java Bharat mm-hmm. with both the schools, uh, teachers and with parents on how they can actually, uh, you know, cope with the virtual learning, how they can make sure that the students don't drop out mm-hmm. uh, despite the challenge of virtual learning. Yeah. So those were the three priorities. And again, uh, I'm pleased with how we have delivered against those three priorities. So uh, you could say that after like more than 15 months, it's getting easier now. 
it's it's never easy <laughs> it's never easy vinita i think mm-hmm. it's uh, you know i think we've uh, we've seen quite a number of waves of yeah. of uh, covid uh, i think we have to stay vigilant mm-hmm. in this uh, but i'm quite optimistic of especially the vaccination program yes uh, and uh, hoping that you know we can get that executed soon mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. get all our employees vaccinated uh, in in the next few months okay and now i'm going to ask about uh png commit uh, commitment to reducing plastic waste and using sustainable materials for its products uh before i talk about that specifically uh, mm-hmm. vinita i wanted to just share you know our own commitment that we had declared mm-hmm. almost a decade ago uh, okay. right in 2010 we said by 2030 the total carbon footprint that we create will be more than halved by oh, 2030 wow. right mm-hmm. and uh, i'm happy to report that you know halfway through this journey we have over delivered against that commitment uh-huh. correct so we have been able to reduce our uh, uh, emissions by about 30% mm-hmm. we have been able to reduce the com- uh, consumption of power by more than 25% across all our uh, all our uh, plants one of the things that we said was we will have zero l- waste to landfill mm-hmm. uh today 91% of our plants are zero la- waste to landfill and i'm happy to report that uh, karawang which is our manufacturing facility uh-huh. uh is a zero waste to landfill okay. right and we also made a commitment that the water that we use will be a recycled uh, one mm-hmm. right we'll be able mm-hmm. to Uh, recycle the water uh, that has been produced and within the plant itself here again in karawang mm-hmm. we have been very successful in in doing that now coming back to the specific question on uh, plastic waste yeah. uh, here again we have been able to take down the amount of plastic raw material consumption by over 20% mm-hmm. uh, across uh, by making a lot of innovative changes in our packaging whether it is sachets the, the number of layers of laminates that we use or whether yeah, it is because that's the one that is the hardest the hardest one to, to recycle, to recycle right? right so yeah. that's that's one which we have done and also in our bottles mm-hmm. you know the amount of uh, plastic that is used has come down uh, over a period of time and without any compromise to the packaging quality of okay. uh, of our brands uh are png using a recycled one or can be recycled one packages uh It, packaging I mean. are we have started the journey of using recycled uh, packaging so okay. we have brands which are uh, which have a substantial amount of their packaging material from mm-hmm. recycled uh, material mm-hmm. uh, and of course our brands you know the the pack material can be recycled as well so oh, yeah okay okay so uh, on the consumer sides uh, are you going to plan to give like i don't know like uh, counters that we can refill the products from PNG like shampoo and everything else we have several plans in in the works uh-huh. uh, we need that in fact uh, uh, you know we are working with many of you know partners in this in this space to yeah. look at all different types of executions mm-hmm. ultimately mm-hmm. the goal is still the same which mm-hmm. is to reduce uh, our plastic usage to reduce the overall carbon footprint there are a number of strategies that mm-hmm, we have mm-hmm. been using uh, refilling is one of them uh, and uh, we've done that in a few countries uh, but not not here? in indonesia oh, okay. as yet mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. i'm looking forward for that <laughs> okay so um uh, mr avi so what do you think is the biggest challenge as a business person to i know being business here in indonesia Well, it's not just Indonesia per se. I think you know. I mean, it's used to sound pretty cliched when we used to talk about this VUCA world, mm-hmm. volatile, uncertain world, and and so on and so forth. That pandemic has basically taught you that you know there is, it is going to be par for the course, mm-hmm. correct? You are going to have uncertainties that you will you will have no strategies to deal with before the uncertainty really. it's you right okay. you will have to be agile mm-hmm. you will have to define what your priorities are and then move forward mm-hmm. uh through the uh, through the uncertainty through the volatility right uh, so i think it's just not an indonesian one but i think overall business 
uh, will only see an increase uh, in the VUCA world, mm -hmm. uh, right? Uh, we, I mean, leaders are taught to look around the corners. I don't think anybody would have seen the pandemic around the corner. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right, so. As a businessman, Mr. LV, uh, who has traveled and lived in a various places, what is your view about Indonesia? Uh, like I said, I think I have now lived in Southeast Asia mm -hmm. for close to 17 years now. 17 lived, years. Yeah, lived in Vietnam, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Philippines, mm -hmm. and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, I think overall Southeast Asia has immense potential. Uh, and Indonesia probably being the largest country uh, with the largest economy yeah. uh, and with an economy which is rapidly evolving into a digital one offers immense opportunities mm -hmm. for, uh, uh, for us to continue to serve the consumers here in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you think is the strength uh, of Indonesia uh, if compared to other Southeast Asia countries? Uh, I don't think it's fair for me to compare uh, between <laughs> okay. other other countries. Uh, but I would say, I think, um, uh, I mean, one of the things that has been striking for us has been the mm -hmm. kind of talent that we have been able to get here in uh, Indonesia. Today, uh, we have uh, close to 60% of the total Indonesians uh, that we have in the company are working outside of Indonesia, working oh, okay. on businesses and priorities, uh -huh. uh, which are, which the impact of which go much beyond uh, Indonesia as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. that's been really striking for us. The second one, which has, uh, uh, which is, which we've been really surprised with, is how quickly the economy has moved into a digital one. Uh, you know, uh, I think, and then of course the, the pandemic has catalyzed this uh, yeah. even more. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, we as a company have been on the forefront of uh, in the internet economy. We're the largest FMCG uh, in the e-commerce space. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we've partnered in the U.S., we've partnered in China. We have a lot of learnings which we are hoping to reapply here in Indonesia as well. Of course, adapting it to the Indonesian consumers. About uh, you as a person, uh, who, who is the person that inspires you the most in business and why? Uh, well, I have uh, uh, several leaders who have uh, inspired me through the uh, through the years uh, but off late I think I have really been inspired with uh, you know what Satya, Satya Nadella has been able to mm -hmm. really create with Microsoft mm -hmm. uh, what he took the business at and how he is able to be uh, how he's been able to transform not just the company but also the culture uh, of, of Microsoft how he's been able to transform the image of Microsoft amongst mm -hmm. the consumers, mm -hmm. uh, that's been pretty inspiring, actually. Okay, so uh, as you've been here for like uh, the last three years, so what is your passion and what do you do uh, when you're free? Well, I have uh, uh, one thing which I would have loved to have done. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the pandemic has kind of limited that is to have traveled across okay. uh, Indonesia. Uh -huh. I think Indonesia is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Indonesia is way beyond just Bali alone. Yes. I think we all know about Bali, but I think it has so much to offer. Where have uh, you been traveled in here in Indonesia? On work, I've actually traveled across most parts of uh, Indonesia. I've traveled into Kalimantan, I've traveled into Sulawesi, I've mm -hmm. traveled into uh, Sumatra, I've traveled a lot in, 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 in Java. Of course, I've been to Bali, uh, uh -huh. yes. But on uh, vacation, uh, as on vacations, yeah. of course, you know, while we would have loved to have gone beyond Bali, but most of our vacations so far has been in Bali. Okay. I'm looking forward to, you know, moving into a post-pandemic world where yeah. we get the opportunity to actually travel and explore large parts of Indonesia. Yes, yes, of course. On a personal level, how do you conduct your daily routine and business activities? Well, at this point in time, of course, <laughs> a lot of it is is done virtually. Yes. Uh, but my my day starts with a uh, good amount of uh, exercising, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is mm -hmm. running or whether it is yoga. Uh, it because I think it really calms you down uh, and brings a lot of energy mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. into into the uh, into the work. And uh, but from there on, I think you know I again define the time when I start and I define when when I stop. 
mm-hmm. the scene but bulk of my time actually is spent with people okay. uh, right so you know i think uh, at the end of the day we have a very young organization yes uh, and an extremely curious one mm-hmm. uh, and uh, actually learn a lot working with the people so as as the boss of png <laughs> is it more tiring now to work like more virtual than uh, meeting with other uh, employees the virtual one has had had its challenges <laughs> you're right it is it does create a lot of fatigue but i have to say that you know uh, after the psbb in june mm-hmm. uh, i have been in the office probably 85 90% of the time uh, okay. even if you know i have been interacting with some of them virtually uh, mm-hmm. and as i have started coming into the office we have seen a lot many more people especially a lot of the uh, small meetings uh, happening at the in the office of course we do maintain social distancing we are we you know our health and safety protocols are all uh, world class it's been actually certified even by the uh, by some of the minist- mm-hmm. uh, the the agencies who have come and inspected our our premises uh but yeah i have i've been able to largely cope with the hybrid way of working yeah 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 okay so is there going to be a change in the future like a hybrid working uh, environment or uh, is it going to be after the pandemic is going to be back again uh, of course i think we i think the pa- pandemic has taught us a lot of lessons in terms of things that we could do uh, far more effectively yeah. without yeah. travel uh-huh. i think those are things that we will definitely preserve the pandemic is also taught us that many things like growing and developing people require the human touch i um, think there's a lot of yeah. collaboration that True. happens yeah uh, when people are together mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of things which happen very quickly when people are together so we'll have to get the best of both worlds uh, okay. going forward as well okay can we expect from png indonesia in the years to come continued enthusiasm mm-hmm. uh, about you know serving the indonesian consumers okay thank you very much for your time and of course uh, we hope that our conversation will inspire people and of course uh, inspire brava listeners